Hi, in this video we will re-implement the covariance matrix adaption evolutionary strategy presented in Hansen 2006 using C++. Evolutionary strategies are part of all embracing class of evolutionary algorithms. Evolutionary algorithms gather researchers who have followed different approaches to simulate various aspects of evolution. These techniques involve the reproduction, random variation, competition and selection of contending individuals in a population. These form the essential essence of evolution. Evolutionary algorithms and evolutionary strategies have in common that they apply their operators in a loop. Each iteration generates a new so-called generation. One continues the sequence of generations until a certain termination criterion is met. The CMA ES has recently drawn increasing attention in several different research fields because of its reliable performance with small populations and its fast convergence. For example, researchers utilize the CMA ES to tune the metaparameters in machine learnings or optimize the parameter configuration of a meta heuristic in operations research. CMAES exploits two main concepts for the adaption of the parameters of the search distribution. First, a maximum likelihood policy is based on the idea of increasing the probability of successful candidate solutions and search steps. In doing so, the mean distributions means related to the decision variables are updated such that the likelihood of the previous successful candidate solutions is maximized. Further, the covariance matrix of the distribution associated with the decision variables is updated so that the probability of the precedent successful search steps increases. Both updates can be interpreted as natural gradient descent. Consequently, the CMA conducts an iterated principal component analysis of successful search steps while retaining all principal axes. In this picture from Wikipedia, you can see the concept described. All six figures describe the state of a population within a two-dimensional optimization problem. The spheric optimization landscape is displayed with solid ISO lines of equal objective values. The objective value related to a specific x-y combination is also implied by the color gradient of the background. The mean and the standard deviation is presented by the dotted orange lines. The mean and the standard deviation or covariance matrix are adjusted according to the most promising individuals within a population. In the first generation, the most promising individuals lie around this position. Those in the second generation, the mean lies around this point. The standard deviation is quite large. The most promising individuals lie around this region. Subsequently, in the third generation, the mean of the population lie around this point. The second main principle of the CMA ES is its memory. That means two paths of the time evolution of the distribution mean are recorded. These paths are called search and evolution paths. These paths contain essential information about the correlation between the consecutive steps. One path is used for the covariance matrix adaption procedure in place of single successful search steps. Besides, the other path is used to conduct step size control. This step size control aims to make consecutive movements of the distribution mean orthogonal in expectation. The step size control effectively prevents premature convergence, yet allowing fast convergence to an optimum. Of course, we cannot see the underlying mass. Nevertheless, the described second main principle of the CMA ES is also addressed in the Wikipedia picture. As you can see, once a promising region has been identified, individuals intensively their search in these areas. In the last three generations, the standard deviation continues to decrease, whereas the mean value remains almost unchanged. There are also some impressive animations online. 
again, we observe the development of a population within a two-dimensional optimization problem. Still, brighter region represents better fitness values. In this animation, the green dots represent the current mean of the population. In contrast to that, the red dot represents the best solution found so far. The paper of Hansen 2006 starts with a comprehensive nomenclature of all symbols used within this paper. Subsequently, he talks about the development and importance of the CMAES. Afterwards, he tells us that, that if we re-implement the framed formulas within this paper, we will get a completely functional algorithm. And that is what we are going to do using C++. We will re-implement this five or six framed formulas and obtain a completely functional CMAES algorithm. At the end of the paper of Hansen 2006, you can find a completely functional MATLAB code comprising the algorithm described above. If you look at the Wikipedia page, you can find exactly this piece of code. This is the corresponding Wikipedia page and you can find the source code right here. The first thing we are going to do is to download the new MAP11 library. This library provides a straightforward access to matrix operations like matrix multiplication or principal component analysis. You can find the links in the video description below. At first, we download the library. Once we have downloaded the new Mars 11 library, we have to delete every example file from the folder. This task is a little bit annoying, but it is necessary to get a compilable project. Otherwise, the project would contain several main functions. A completely clean folder should look like that. Now we can create our C++ project. First I include a file which contains the main function. Subsequently, we copy the new Mars 11 library into our project folder and include the folder into our project. Now we can make our necessary includes. and create our first metric, matrix object containing 20 rows and 2 columns. Depending on the compiler you are using, you could be fine. However, I am using the Microsoft Visual, Visual C++ compiler and I have to make a few adjustments. I have to include one particular preprocessor statement. And we have successfully created our first matrix object. Like in the nomenclature of the paper, we have first to declare all required variables before we can start to implement our algorithm. There are 
the means of the decision variables. The next line initializes the matrix with zero elements. Of course, there is a covariance matrix. Vi could be a single value or a vector comprising the weights of the individuals within the population. Pc and P sigma are the path vectors. The next line initializes both vectors. Mu denotes the relevant individuals within the population. Mu effective is the variance effective selection mass. Mu cov is a parameter for weighting between rank 1 and rank mu update. Cov is lower equal 1 and represents the learning rate for accumulation for rank 1 update of the covariance matrix. Cc is the backward time horizon. C sigma is also the backward time horizon. D sigma is damping is a damping parameter for the step size update. And finally, sigma is an adaptive learning rate. Last but not least, D is a diagonal matrix which contains the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix. And V is a matrix which contains the eigenvectors column wise. Now we can start to implement our algorithm. The first thing I will do is to declare a global variable for a random number generator. Subsequently, we have to initialize our population. Afterwards, we create the mean of the decision variables. Now the console displays the initial values of the individuals in our population and the mean of our decision variables. As you could see, the function sum columns return a row vector. To avoid further misunderstandings, we transpose this return value. Now we will initialize the covariance matrix. We will use the formula given in Hansen 2006 for the empirical covariance matrix. This formula looks more complicated as it, as it is. The main compu computation is within these brackets. These brackets are identical. The only difference is the transponation of the second bracket. This is a column vector and there's another column vector generated by a summation and yeah that's it finally there is a coefficient which is multiplied with the result of this accumulation so we will start the implementation i will use a function and because we compute a covariance matrix, the return type is a symmetric matrix. We will take the population as input first we will initialize the return value or the covariance matrix 
respectively and the accumulated term within the bracket or the column sum respectively. Subsequently, we will implement the sum using a for loop. In each iteration, we will first compute the value within one bracket. Afterwards, we will multiply it with its transposed value. Subsequently, we add the result to the empirical covariance matrix. The final return value is a cumulated empirical covariance matrix multiplied with this coefficient. So, let's go! Note, we can only add a symmetric matrix to our covariance matrix, because our covariance matrix is a symmetric matrix as well. To maintain this probability, the added matrix must be a symmetric matrix as well. To be able to assign specific values to a symmetric matrix, we have to use the shift operator. Finally, we can add our auxiliary variable to our covariance matrix. Back in our main function, we can now initialize our covariance matrix by calling the implemented function. And let's display this matrix. Looks quite good. As the covariance matrix is updated by the most promising individuals, we need some kind of sort function. In this way, we can access the most promising individuals by index. Therefore, we need some kind of evaluation function or fitness function. I have chosen the Buckingham function number 6 because it exhibits many local optima, all of which lie on the ridge. Also, it is easy to implement. The function takes a row vector as argument. Note, as the bucking function number 6 represents a minimization problem, I revert the objective function value by multiplying minus 1 to obtain a maximization problem. Now we can create a simple bubble sort algorithm to sort our population. The function takes in as argument for population matrix M. Now we can go back to our main function and sort and display our population. Here we can see our sorted population. 
Finally, we are ready to go to implement our CMA ES. First, we will display the current iteration, step size and population. Afterwards, we will display the related fitness values. Subsequently, we will employ the eigenvalue decomposition of the covariance matrix. We will use the function eigenvalues of the new mass library. It is important to know that the diagonal matrix D contains the squared values of the eigenvalues. So it is crucial to take the square root of the elements in D. As you may have already noticed, the relation sign in the termination criterion must be in the opposite direction. Sorry for this mistake. Now we are ready to implement the first framed equation of the paper. We have to sample a new generation of search points following the distribution defined in the formula. Fortunately, Hansen gives an equivalent distribution which is much easier to compute. To be particular, this is the distribution we will use. It contains the old means or the current means, the current step size or sigma, the matrix containing the eigenvectors column bias and the diagonal matrix containing the eigenvectors multiplied with a random variable following a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So we will use a for loop to generate a new generation of search point. At first we have to create a vector of random variables. Subsequently, we can generate a new search point. Finally, we sort the new generation of sort points. Now we have to compute the new means, considering only the mu best individuals within our population. As we will need the old means as well, we will declare a new variable to store the new means. We initialize the new means with zero values. Maybe you have already noticed that we initialized VEI with the wrong value. We have to change that. I divided 1 by the number of rows, however, I should divide 1 by mu. So we move this declaration and definition down here and change M rows to mu and go back.
the next frame deputation we have to implement is the computation of the evolution path. This evolution path is a column vector. We can see here in the equation that we add two column vectors of the mean divided by a coefficient multiplied by a coefficient and adding another column vector representing the evolution path from the precedent iteration. The fourth framed equation we have to implement is the update of the covariance matrix. So let's look what we have to do. At first we multiply a coefficient with the covariance matrix of the precedent iteration. Then we add another symmetric matrix. We obtain this symmetric matrix by multiplying the evolution path with the transposed evolution path. The evolution path has n rows and one column and the transposed version has one row and n columns. So finally we obtain a symmetric n times n matrix. And finally we add another symmetric matrix. The last symmetric matrix looks a little bit more complicated. However, again we only have to compute the first bracket. The second bracket is the first bracket only transposed. So we will compute in a for loop at first the rank mu update. Now we can write down the whole equation. Now we are almost done. The last remaining thing we have to do is to adjust the step size. In doing so, we first calculate the conjugate evolution path at generation G. The equation looks quite familiar to the computation of the common evolution path. Nu is this covariance matrix. Hansen gives a definition of this covariance matrix. So let's compute this covariance matrix first and then calculate the conjugate evolution path. The last remaining framed equation is the update of the step size. To compute this update we need an approximation for this expression. Hansen gives a proper approximation for this expression. We will use a function to compute this value. Now we can write down the framed equation. Finally, we have to update the mean. Now we can try our CMAES.
looks quite good. Remember, the fitness values are reverted. So our real fitness values are 0, 1, and so on. The global optimum of the Buckins function 6 is 0. So our CMA ES failed to obtain the global optimum. However, its performance is nevertheless impressive. As we see, we start with a fitness of 10. In the second iteration, it looks like we have completely lost our grip. But when we continue, the values become better and better. And the standard deviation decreases. So finally we can say that we have successfully implemented an CMAES with C++. Thank you for your attention.